Good afternoon, my name is Scott Mensch, and I'm going to speak today on behalf of Project Haystack. Uh, Project Haystack is an exciting open community. It's uh, both a standards body as well as a protocol. And I'm going to take you on a tour of uh, a change that's happening in our industry. And I'm going to give you some examples of where Project Haystack is being applied today. So we're not talking about a hypothetical idea, but actually a, a very solid organization. And it's growing each year. And it's part of this complementary community that we see here with BACnet, KNX, Lawnmark, and all of the other banners that you see as part of an open standards community. So I'm going to weave those two themes together for you today. And so let's get started. I think I only have a little bit of time. My background is as a system integrator putting in smart buildings. And when I started, I used these tools, uh, pneumatics. Uh, that was a way to make a, a building smart with air and, and mechanical levers. The tools matured over the time to electronic controls and you substituted wire and electricity to make the decisions in the building and to make it smarter and controlled. And in the later part of my career, we went to what we call direct digital controls or DDC controls. And if you're following along with the theme of tools, you'll notice that the mouse has replaced the wire strippers or the tubing cutters. But interesting enough, the efficiencies of implementing a smart building didn't really go up that much. We were essentially still using the computer and the mouse as a virtual tool. But if I had to do a big haul like this with hundreds of pieces of equipment, I would individually do all 100 of those with the mouse. And the reason this is, is that there was no way to add meaning to the real world information, such as a temperature sensor so that an application could automatically do the work for the system integrator. That's all changing. We are in an era now, which is what I call the next big step change in smart buildings. That step change is based on this concept of tagging and data modeling, essentially adding meaning to things that are being modeled in the digital world to match up with the real world but in a way that applications could automatically understand what it is that's being modeled. And I'll give some examples of that in a minute. But what you'll see here from the diagram is this is where we are. This is not something in the future, but this is today with Project Haystack and applications that utilize tagging and data modeling, semantic meaning. Those applications and the things they can do go up and the amount of effort that goes into deploying a smart building goes down. And the reason I call this a step change, because it's not incremental. It is literally revolutionizing the amount of labor that goes into a project and enabling more applications than ever before. Now, the challenge that we're facing here, and everybody's participating in this, is the Internet of Things, big data, and those challenges are that the world is getting smarter and it's getting more connected. But unfortunately, customers who want to leverage this big data are finding it isolated in little islands of data. There's the real estate system. There's the building automation system. There's various places where this data lives. And these applications find it difficult to reach down and connect to all that data. And in fact, that's a very manual process today when a system integrator wants to bring a solution to an end customer. The good news is that protocols like we see here in the BACnet, as well as some of the partners you see above me, have brought us forward with devices talking to devices and standardizing how those communications happen. That's the wonderful news. The bad news is that we still have islands of BACnet information over here, LawnWorks information over here, and so forth. And in the overall scheme of things, this is really at the lower level of the grand architecture. Uh, compliments of one of our co-authors of a white paper I just recently did on interoperability is uh, National Renewable Energy Labs. And they came up with this idea of the three pillars of interoperability. And as you can see, we have the 
technical peer, the informational peer, and the organizational. And when we talk about open standards, I think we've done a great job with the technical piece, getting devices, talking to devices, particularly at the lower level, but also up to the higher levels, such as control, supervisory, and the management workstation. What we're going to talk about today is that we complement that with the Haystack protocol, but then we go on to the informational side. And this is where applications start to connect to those devices seamlessly. And I'll give you some examples of that. And if we look at the future, I believe that Project Haystack covers another peer of interoperability, and that's the community effect, the best practices, the standards of somebody that's running a building because of Project Haystack and the meaning that's in the data can share best practices as well. So you'll see a few standards in the US as an example that are, are, are particularly centered around um, performance of a smart building. Now the idea of tagging is not a new one. We in our personal lives use tagging for Facebook, uh, for uh, social media in general. So if I were to take a picture today, I would tag it as this conference and I'd be able to search that using a hashtag. So to find information, it would be very easy. But I think the bigger payoff of tagging has to do with tools and the labor to implement a solution. Let's take Facebook as an example. There's not a system integrator back at Facebook headquarters that's going to take my picture from this, put it into my mobile uploads. They don't copy it and put it out onto my current status. There's an application that does that. Why is that application able to do that? Why is there no system integrator behind the scenes doing this and this with that mouse that we saw? It's because of tagging and data modeling. When I uploaded that picture, I put enough information on it that it was coming from Scott on my mobile phone. There's two tags. It was about this conference. That's another tag. And then automatically, that application knew to put it into those different places. That's what I'm talking about, but now for smart buildings. So let's talk about the solution. The solution is Project Haystack. It's a collection of open source, like-minded people. Everyone here can participate, and we're encouraging people to participate. Uh, the idea is to create some conventions, but it's very open in the sense that you can have your own tags that make sense for your particular market. Uh, we're always looking for people to contribute, like lighting, uh, variable frequency drives. There's a whole bunch of sub pieces that could be added to it. And ultimately, it's part of a model. So if I wanted to show off a graphic of a, an air handler or a piece of equipment in the ceiling, I would model that as a collection of points, each with its own set of tags. And any application now that wants to do a dashboard of an air handler would be able to look at that model and immediately know where to put all the temperatures. The payoff, as I've been saying, is a dramatic reduction in labor. That application will programmatically or automatically know, based on the model and the tags, what to do with that information without somebody manually taking the mouse and doing this. Uh, we affectionately call that the link monkey. Imagine a monkey with a mouse going link, 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 link. That's why we call him the link monkey. So the, the payoff is that if we can give meaning, give some inherent definition to data as it flows through the system, and we do this across all of our devices, and we do it across all of our applications, that binding piece, that uh, connection happens automatically. So enough talking about the big picture. Let's talk about specifics. This is real. This is happening today. So let's give you three examples before my time is up. And let's start out with an easy one, uh, user experience and visualization. You know, we all know that in building automation, there's a management station typically, or there's some really cool touch screens I've seen around here today. Um, those are all displaying data for us humans. And uh, back in the day before IoT, it used to be called M to M, man to machine. And uh, it's the same idea. We're, we're creating that visualization. And so imagine that uh, your building automation system, after it's been turned on and all the points are reading correctly, the dashboard and the user experience is automatically generated. It's done. And I can give you examples after this if you'd like to go a little bit deeper. But um, I can tell you today there are manufacturers and people that use the technology as part of the community that have applications such as visualization that just work. You finish your integration, and you now have a visualization for a piece of equipment. 
for a dashboard for your energy usage. The key is that we're leveraging those tags and we're leveraging those data models to automatically generate that, whether it be on a workstation, a mobile phone, or a tablet. The other thing is when you have any kind of typicalness in a building, and this particularly applies to graphics, then you don't have to copy it 15 times or 1,500 times. You quite literally find the data based on a query rather than a manual one-to-one -one relationship. I know this is a little technical, but to really prove the point, um, this kind of automatic binding has a one-to-many relationship because now data is being done using queries rather than individual links. And we'll, we'll leave it at that. Another exciting example you know, at a high level would be command and control, the ability to make a smart building smart. Using that same concept of a, a model and the tag data underneath it, imagine a sequence of operation that just like the graphic could have a one-to-many relationship. Uh, I, as a system integrator before my various careers, um, used to copy the same sequence over and over again for each room controller. I would copy the same alarm sequence over and over again for each pump and each space temperature sensor. With tagging and data modeling in Project Haystack, we could add a few tags to that control sequence one time, and we could have hundreds of pieces of equipment and thousands of space temperatures that have the same tag. And it's just a matching game. The software that's running the command and control algorithm will go, oh, you're a space temperature because I see those tags. I'm a high temperature alarm. Would you like to bind? And it'll bind instantly. So that one copy of the routine doesn't have to be manually linked to 1,000 space temperatures. That one copy of the control routine dynamically connects it to all of the ones that it finds out there in the smart building. It's a breakthrough. I can't stress how this example is so far reaching, but this is a, a quintessential game changer. Imagine going to the next level, and this is real today with applications and partners in the community using Project Haystack and tagging and data modeling, is the ability to run an analytics routine. Very similar to maybe that control routine example I just gave you, but now maybe going deeper that looks at maybe historical data and binds to the historical data just like it binds to the real-time data during the control strategy. So we could go back to a piece of equipment and say, I've been steadily watching your efficiency go down over the last 10 days. Let me write an analytic that uses standard deviation, and after it deviates by a certain amount, I'm going to generate an alert. So those kinds of things were very costly to do in the past. And one of the barriers to entry for something like automated analytics was the amount of manual process to link all those historical values back to a rule or a rules engine that could run the analytics. Now again with Project Haystack, if you put a little bit of metadata or tagging at the equipment level and make a matching set of tags at the application, in this case automated analytics, they dynamically bind. So the return on investment for owners that want to try a new idea to find new cost savings is huge. The amount of labor that it takes to try that is tiny. So it's opening up all new opportunities where people have a great idea and they can get into the market with a new product, a new concept, that much easier. So just to wrap things up, this is all about a collaboration, which I think is so wonderful about this, this community effort that we have going on here. Uh, no one company is going to be able to solve this problem, but I think collaboratively, if we have a common tagging and data modeling standard, and a lot of the standards for the devices work collaboratively towards that goal, we're going to see new solutions, we're going to see new services, and the industry as a whole will evolve faster together. This uh, presentation will be made available, so I've got hyperlinks for more information if you'd like to learn more. Uh, these magical tags and data models are documented at project-haystack.org. Um, you can read our online magazine called Haystack Connections Magazine that goes into more examples of software applications that use tagging and data modeling today. Or I'll be around a little bit after. Uh, you feel free to get my business card and I'll point you in the right direction. 
Uh, it's even open for the community as developers. Uh, we have source code and code examples. So if you have a great idea and you want to leverage that tagging and data modeling and that low barrier to entry, you could get in and try things yourself. And if you just want to ha have some uh, general background and want to learn more, we have a very active forum. So projecthaystack.org forum and look at various topics. And uh, we're looking to expand our working groups. So we encourage you to get involved and find something that you're passionate about, join a working group, and let's roll up our sleeves and work this together. All right. So with that said, I appreciate your time today. Uh, my one German word is Danke. Thank you very much, and hope you have a great day. Thank you very much, Scott.